this week on Days of Our Mercedes. The Sail Earls are coming off another result in Mexico where they just fell short of their first one of the season with Lewis Hamilton getting another second place finish to Max Verstappen as time is running out on the Silver Earls to look for their first win of the season. Of course, during the off week, F1 will continue their trip in America as they would do their tour in Las Vegas. Of course, Lewis Hamilton took part in these festivities along with Verstappen and many others, including Verstappen taking a trip to a fucking casino while people were still gambling in there. No, I did not have any money on on an F1 car going through the casino. But I had no idea if anyone put put their money on black on the fucking spin table, on the roulette table. Meanwhile, Lewis Hamilton would take part in these festivities by doing donuts on the Vegas Strip. As you can see, these are the only donuts that Lewis Hamilton will be doing this year, maybe. We shall see if Hamilton can get his first win of the season. Or will Lewis Hamilton go winless for the first time in his career? Of course, Lewis also had a busy week too other than that, as Sir Lewis Hamilton would end up becoming an honorary citizen of Brazil. Sir Lewis, leader of men. A wise choice. So now Lewis Hamilton is the adopted son of Brazil now. No, Lewis, you are not Ayrton Senna. You will never be Ayrton Senna. And of course, through this week, Lewis Hamilton was also asked about the 2008 championship he won in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, at Interlagos. When asked if Lu the way Lewis won the title in 2008 was the same as the way he lost it in 2021. And Lewis said, no, it wasn't, because 2008 wasn't manipulated, unlike 2021. You know what would have helped you not lose the title in 2021, Lewis? Very simple. Not staying out on 40 lab old tires, you dumb fuck. We've told you this many times, Lewis. It was your own team's goddamn fault for leaving you out there. You had every chance to pit during that safety car. And you failed to take advantage of it. But of course, with all that drama now set out of the way... The weekend would get turned a bit upside down during qualifying when... What in the actual fuck is this? How in the fuck did Haas get a goddamn pole? What in the fuck? Hmm. Well, I guess something about to tell Gunther Steiner that Haas ain't a bunch of fucking wankers this week. Today they're a bunch of fucking legends. Hell yeah. So yeah, the attention now turns to Brazil, to Interlagos. Before we get to the actual race, we had a sprint race on hand first. As the sprint race would decide the starting lineup. As yeah, as you see, yeah, when I was looking up the championship clinch for scenarios for, 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 for Stappen a couple months ago, I actually forgot Brazil had a sprint race in it. Because I was figuring out, wait, how the fuck is that wrong? How the fuck is that right? When I was trying to calculate the points, saying, uh, no, he will max at these points, and I looked at the number, and I was like, wait a minute. Brazil had a sprint race, didn't it? And yep, it did. So, of course, the sprint race. It would see Magnussen have the lead for two laps. And then he would inevitably get passed by Max Verstappen on lap three. It's okay, Kevin. You're still a fucking legend in our hearts. You're the only person at Haas that isn't a total fucking wanker. Meanwhile, for Staff, it would have the lead up front, but it would end up catching up to him because in this race, everybody was on the softs. And Red Bull gambled by taking the mediums because they didn't think tire wear was a big difference. It ended up being a big difference. As George Russell would run down for Staffen, and Russell would get the lead from, Ru from Verstappen late in the sprint race. While Sides and everybody else would make their way past him. But Sides would not end up being near the front row as Sides would take a 5 points grid penalty. Beep! Meanwhile, Russell would go on and cruise to the win. So George Russell wins the sprint race. And Mercedes kind of gets their first win of the season. Not a real win, it's only a sprint race. So calm the fuck down, Mercedes fanboys. You aren't there yet. But take baby steps. You're getting there. Just take the baby steps. But with, but with um, Carlos Sides 
five grand place penalty. It meant that the starting lot row would be George Russell and Lewis Hamilton. So we have a Mercedes front wheel lockout. Holy shit, Mercedes actually fucking did something and actually got a front wheel lockout. And they didn't fuck up the pitch strategy yet. That is amazing to see. Things you kind of want to see too. As long as Russell wins, Russell winning would be the only Mercedes win we could get behind. But now to the Brazilian Grand Prix itself. Of course, for, the, for Interlagos, this is a race that's been kind to Hamilton the last couple years. As Hamilton has won two of the last three in Brazil. Of course, 2018, most of that was because of Max Verstappen getting dumped by Esteban Ocon. But 2021, he was able to hold, beat Verstappen in a close duel for the win. Of course, right off the bat, Russell would get a good launch for the lead right off the bat. And then we would have conflict off after lab one. Because first off, we had Daniel Ricciardo dump Kevin Magnussen and both of them would be out of the race. Wow, so within 24 hours from qualifying to the race, Magnussen goes from hero to zero. At least you have a pull at least, that's something. And don't worry, Ricardo is still is now one race away from being out of a ride in F1 next year. As it's been confirmed that Daniel Ricardo will not be back next year. But meanwhile up front, we would have, a, we would have the two, another duel between Verstappen and Hamilton. As they both make contact in turn two in the air in the S's. Of course, whether who was at fault for it? Was Verstappen at fault or was Hamilton at fault? I mean, Hamilton did kind of come down on Verstappen and Verstappen had nowhere to go. I mean, you be the judge of it. But in the end, Lewis had a damaged car that would need a couple repairs. While Max Verstappen would get a five second penalty. For causing a collision. Beep, that would put Verstappen deep in the field. While also having to repair a couple damages on his car. As George Russell would continue to pull away. And Russell would continue to lead throughout much of the race. As not a whole lot happened. Throughout much of this race. And also Ferrari staying close to Mercedes. Because the battle for second in the Constructors Championship is still on the line. Between Mer the Silver Heroes and the... Prancing horses of Italy, as who will outchoke the other for the set for second in the championship. Of course, both the all, all the all the drivers would pit late in the race until we would get a late race virtual safety car after Lando Norris lost power to his car, and then it would inevitably turn into a safety car, as everyone except for Sergio Perez would all pit for soft. Scuff soft, but still soft nonetheless. And the safety car was not what George Russell wanted to see, because before that safety car, he had an 11 second lead on Lewis Hamilton. And oh no. Oh no. Don't tell me they're gonna make Lewis, they're gonna tell Russell to pull over for Hamilton. No. No. Lewis must have a winless season. No. No. George, don't you fucking dare pull over. Stop. Don't do it. Don't fucking do it, you son of a bitch. Get your first win. Mercedes, you better not screw him out of it. Oh, thank God. Russell got away on the safety car. Phew. I thought for a second we were going to have the winless Lewis Hamilton season ruined there. Thank fuck. But, the sport, but despite the best efforts from Lewis Hamilton, he could not close in on him. Meanwhile, in the middle of the field, Sergio Perez would lose positions on the track as both the Ferraris would end up right behind the Silver Arrows. As Ferrari is doing their best damage control in terms of the championship. And then during this run, Max Verstappen worked his way back up into the top 10. And then, and then Red Bull would tell Sergio Perez to let Verstappen by. And then they told Verstappen that if Verstappen can't get past Alonso, Verstappen has to let Pep Chip Harris by on the final lap. Keep note of that. That's going to be important in a few seconds. A few seconds. Because meanwhile, up front, George Russell would end up pulling away and holding off Lewis Hamilton by about a second and a half, two seconds. And George Russell finally comes through. And George Russell takes the checkered flag in Brazil at Interlagos. And George Russell gets his first career win in Brazil. 
So Russell has done it, and the Silver Arrows' winless streak is over. The Silver Arrows have finally won a race this year in a season from hell that sees their eight straight Constructors' Championship get snapped. So George Russell is officially a winner in Formula One as he gets the win and Lewis Hamilton comes home in second. So for the first time in ages, we have a Mercedes 1-2 finish. Something we thought we wouldn't see this year with how bad the Silver Arrows have been with all the drama that's plagued them. Because let's be honest, days of our Mercedes, does that sound like a healthy team to you? No? I figured that. And Carlos Sides comes in third on the podium to wrap it up as Ferrari finishes right behind Mercedes. And of course, everyone asking if Mercedes is back. Seriously, we're starting this shit now because they won one goddamn race, they're all of a sudden back? No, no, no. Wake me up, wake me up if they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Verstappen next week. But of course, the big controversy came after the race. When on the last lap, Verstappen was told to let Perez by. But Verstappen ignored team orders and finished ahead of Perez. And that affects the championship because if P P Verstappen let Perez by, Perez would enter Abu Dhabi two points ahead of Leclerc for second in the championship. But because Verstappen ignored team orders, Perez and Leclerc are tied for second in the championship entering Abu Dhabi. And Leclerc has the tiebreaker off most wins, 3-2. to two. And of course, when Red Bull asked Verstappen what happened on the radio, Verstappen told, effectively told him to fuck off. I mean, here's the radio communications here. And Perez telling Red Bull that Verstappen just showed his true powers. So we got drama here on this team. So, 1-11-1 is now the new successor to Multi-21 from, from nine years ago in Malaysia. We have drama here in Brazil. While the Silver Arrows finally celebrate their first win of the season. Coming late in the year. And they still have a good chance to finish second in the Constructors' Championship. But Mercedes is probably going to have to have another 1-2 walkout in Abu Dhabi. And need to hope some of that good old Ferrari pit magic that has plagued Ferrari in the past. That's pretty much led to Verstappen having an easy path to the title. They gotta hope that magic comes back so that they can have a chance at second in the Constructors' Championship. But yeah, let's be honest though. Team orders are kind of fucking stupid anyway. It's more manipulation to be perfectly honest. I have the easiest solution to the team orders problem here with Red Bull. Get rid of team orders and just have the drivers fucking race. Just let them fucking race for fuck's sakes. Let them race in who and let the best driver win. Simple as that. Team orders are kind of stupid and dumb and it's more politics than racing to be honest. But anyway, while we figure out this mess here, George Russell will celebrate his first win. And this means that the streak of a Britain driver winning an F1 will continue. There will be no winless Brit in F1 this year. It's like the sands in the hourglass, so too are the days of our Mercedes. At least Russell winning is a Mercedes win we can all get behind.